lab for Neuroanatomy Lab 1. First we'll go over the basic components of the central nervous system. So the brain has four divisions. We have the telencephalon, which is made up of the cerebral hemispheres and basal nuclei. We have the diencephalon, which contains anything with the word thalamus in it. Next we have the brain stem, made up of the, of the midbrain, pons, and medulla. And last we have the cerebellum. And the diencephalon is the green structure here. Next we'll go on to your lab objectives, starting with cerebral landmarks. So first we have the longitudinal fissure highlighted here in blue. That's going to separate your right and left cerebral hemispheres, and that's also going to be where your folk cerebri is going to sit. Here's a blank slide that we'll use in between the objectives. And along the way with each of these structures, I will try to state a function when possible, but keep in mind you guys are going to go into much more detail in lecture as to what each of these structures do, so I'm really just trying to give you a general sense of what, uh, what each structure does. So first we have the frontal lobe. That includes Broca's area, which is involved in motor speech. It has other motor cortices and also has a cortex for higher mental functions. So that includes judgment, planning, social behavior. Next we have the parietal lobe. That has a cortex for visual, auditory, and spatial integration and also a primary and association sensory cortex. Next objective is the temporal lobe. This has a primary and secondary auditory cortex along with Wernicke's area, which is involved in speech comprehension and this is located in the middle cranial fossa. That is followed by the occipital lobe. So the occipital lobe has a primary and secondary visual cortex and is located in the posterior cranial fossa. Next we have the lateral fissure here highlighted in green. So that is just separating our frontal and parietal lobe from our temporal lobe. The next objective is the central sulcus highlighted here in green. So the sulci are these invaginations of the brain right here and then we have the gyri which are the outward projections here and we're going to use these landmarks to be able to name gyri so this is the central sulcus right here and next we have the precentral gyrus okay so here's central sulcus again so pre in front of precentral gyrus and the precentral gyrus is a primary motor area next we have the post central gyrus so again, here was the central sulcus directly behind it. We have the postcentral gyrus, which is an, a primary somatosensory area. And followed by the poles. So we have the, the poles are just the most rostral or caudal areas of, the, uh, of each lobe. So we have the frontal pole, just the most rostral part of the frontal lobe. Next we have the occipital pole, most caudal part of the occipital lobe, and then the temporal pole, most rostral part of the temporal lobe. Next we're going on to the hemisection cerebrum. So we're looking at that from a medial perspective. This is the blank slide we'll use in between, or you can use to study if you like. So first we have the cingulate gyrus right here highlighted in green. So the cingulate gyrus is part of the limbic system or limbic lobe, and that is going to be involved with uh, the five F's is one way to remember those. So that is feeding, fleeing, fighting, feeling, and fornicating. So cingulate gyrus, part of the limbic system. Next we have the corpus callosum. So that is just deep to the cingulate gyrus right here. And the corpus callosum is a white matter structure connecting the right and left cerebral hemispheres. And this next structure highlighted in green is the septum pellucidum. So that is a bilayer structure that is separating the lateral ventricles. So talking about lateral ventricles, so this is the fully assembled ventricular system. So we don't necessarily need to worry about the specific parts, but we have the lateral ventricles here, right and left. So there are these C-shaped structures with this kind of tail on the back. So the lateral ventricles here, followed by the third ventricle, and then fourth ventricle, and we'll talk about their connection points later. So the septum pellucidum is a bilayered structure that is going to separate the lateral ventricle at this portion right here. So it's going to be going in between the right and left lateral ventricle. So if this is a perfectly hemisectioned brain, the lateral ventricle is going to be just lateral to the septum pellucidum, this highlighted green structure. Next we have the parieto occipital fissure. So this is our parietal lobe here. This is our occipital lobe. The fissure is just a landmark separating those two. And then we have the calcerine sulcus. So within our occipital lobe here, we have this sulcus highlighted in green, and that's just going to separate different functional areas of the occipital lobe. Next, we're moving on to the diencephalon. That is a structure highlighted in green here. So uh, anything containing the word thalamus. 
So here is from the a hemisection view highlighted in blue here. This is our diencephalon. This is an anterior view, so we just talked about the ventricular system, and this is just kind of for your own information, but the ventricular system is going to kind of, or at least the superior part of it, is going to wrap around the diencephalon. So this is the thalamus, which is the largest part of the diencephalon. So just keep that in mind that the ventricular system is kind of surrounding the diencephalon. Our next objective is the interventricular foramen, or foramen of Monroe, and third ventricle. So we talked about the lateral ventricle before, which is this big C-shaped structure right here, and that is going to run into the third ventricle via the interventricular foramen right here, or the foramen Monroe. Foramen of Monroe, they're synonymous. So from there, from the third ventricle, we will be going into the fourth ventricle via the cerebral aqueduct. So now we're going to look at these, these areas in section view. So here we said is our septum pellucidum, and our lateral ventricle will be just lateral to the septum pellucidum. So from the lateral ventricle, we're going to flow into the third ventricle, which is this space right here, via the foramen of Monroe, or interventricular foramen. So that's this little black area here, and will be just lateral to this area highlighted in green. Next we have the third ventricle. So from the foramen of Monroe, or interventricular foramen, the cerebral spinal fluid is going to flow into the third ventricle, which is outlined here with this uh, black dotted line. The next structure is the thalamus. So that is part of the diencephalon, right here, kind of this round structure jutting out at us. And the thalamus is a major relay for all ascending sensory info except olf olfaction. And this is going to regulate motor function and do a, a number of other things. Next structure is the hypothalamus. So you guys probably remember this from from endocrine. So that's the inferior most portion of the diencephalon and is going to have endocrine and autonomic function. The mammillary body is this little little bulb, this little projection right here. That is also part of the limbic system, so if you recall the limbic system, the mnemonic is 5Fs, or memory tool 5Fs, feeding, fleeing, fighting, feeling, and fornication. Next we have the infundibulum or pituitary stock, those terms are synonymous. So the infundibulum is going to carry blood vessels to the anterior pituitary and carry nerves to the posterior pituitary. Next is the pineal gland, so it's kind of on the posterior aspect of the diencephalon here. That's going to be involved in melaton melatonin secretion and circadian rhythms. And last we have the optic chiasm, which is right here. So that's just going to be where our optic nerves are crossing and also if you have uh, prolactinoma or any kind of pituitary swelling, it will push on the um, caudal side of the optic chiasm, and that can give you bilateral hemianopsia, which you guys will learn about. Next, we have a parasagittal section. So parasagittal is going to be next to midline. So first, we're going to start with the corona radiata. So this is a white matter structure that is going to carry information from the cerebral cortex to deeper areas of the brain. So these are just axons carrying information from the cerebral cortex up here, which is gray matter, down to lower areas of the brain. The next structure is the caudate. So we have the, that's highlighted here in purple. So here's the body head. So the caudate, caudate nucleus um, is one of the basal nuclei. So that has to do with cognitive aspects of movement. And basal nuclei, there are a handful of them. They are the caudate, putamen, globus pallidus, and subthalamic nucleus. So when you hear of these four, the basal nuclei, just think movement, because they're involved in the motor system. So we have the head of the caudate here, and next we have the lateral ventricle, which is going to be present just medial to the caudate nucleus. And we'll see some other views later that will kind of help to give you a better understanding of that. But the lateral ventricle will be medial to the anterior caudate or head of the caudate. Next we have the putamen. So this, this section is flipped, so just keep that in mind. This is rostral before previous slides rostral is on the other end. So the putamen is going to be highlighted here in pink, and that again is one of the basal nuclei, so that's involved in movement. Next we go on to coronal sections. So this is going to be the blank slide we use in between the labeled sections. So first we have the lateral ventricle highlighted here in green. Remember the big C-shaped structure with the, the horns on the posterior aspect, or the um, kind of points sticking out on the posterior aspect. Next we have the thalamus, so that's part of the diencephalon right here, highlighted in green. Then we have the globus pallidus. So there's actually a globus pallidus externa and interna. Right now you just need to know that these two structures are globus pallidus. And that again is one of the basal nuclei that is involved in uh, motor function or the motor system. 
this structure highlighted in green is the insular cortex. So this whole area on the outside of the brain is the cortex comprised of gray matter. The insular cortex is right here, kind of inside these two folds. And the ins insular cortex is involved in consciousness, self-awareness, and cognition. Next we have the caudate nucleus. So that's this little area highlighted in green here. And we said before that the lateral ventricles are medial to the caudate nucleus, as you can see here. Next we have the internal capsule. So that's another white matter structure. So if we go back, we talked about the corona radiata that is going to carry information from the gray matter of the cerebral cortex down into lower areas of the brain. So the internal capsule is this white area right here, which is just a continuation of the corona radiata. So that's just continuing to take information from the higher brain centers to uh, lower areas of the brain. Next we have the putamen right here. And that is another one of the basal nuclei, so again, involved with the motor system. And last, we have the hippocampus right here. And the hippocampus is involved in memory formation. Next, we move on to horizontal sections. So this is the blank section we have right here. Notice that these are at two different depths. This section on the right is going to be a more ventral section than the one on the left. So first, we have the lateral ventricles. This is lateral ventricles, different, different named parts, but just know that these are lateral ventricles. Next we have the caudate nucleus. Again, that's one of the basal nuclei involved in movement. So that's lateral to the anterior lateral ventricles, followed by the internal capsule. Okay, so we said that was the white matter that is relaying information from the cerebral cortex and the corona radiata to deeper areas of the brain. Here's the putamen from another view. That again is another one of the basal nuclei involved in movement or the motor system. This is the corpus callosum. So that is a white matter structure that is connecting the right and left cerebral hemispheres. Here's our thalamus again. So again, that's involved in uh, relaying sensory information except for olfaction and regulating motor function. And here's our globus pallidus, comprised of the globus pallidus externa and interna. And last, we have the insular cortex here from another view on both sides. All right, onto the brainstem. So this is going to be our blank brainstem picture. So the brainstem is made up of the midbrain here in yellow, the pons in purple, and the medulla oblongata in green. So first we have the cerebral aqueduct. So that is this structure right here that cerebral spinal fluid is going to pass through. So if we recall, our lateral ventricle is going to be present just lateral to the septum pellucidum here. And that is going to flow through the interventricular foramen or foramen of Monroe into the third ventricle. And then from the third ventricle, we're going to go through the cerebral aqueduct right here in the midbrain and flow into the fourth ventricle. Next, we have the superior colliculus. That is this posterior kind of bulge. Here's another view of it. So this is a posterior view of it. And the cerebral aqueduct, or the superior colliculus, excuse me, is involved in uh, visual processing. Next, we have the inferior colli colliculus right here. Also on the posterior aspect of the midbrain, here's a posterior view of that, and that is going to be involved in auditory processing. So the, to remember which colliculus does what, your eyes are located over your ears, so the superior colliculus is up here, that has to do with visual processing, inferior colliculus is below it, that has to do with auditory processing. Next we have the pons, or the purple highlighted area here, that is going to have the fourth ventricle in it. Okay, so we went through the cerebral aqueduct, and that's coming into the fourth ventricle highlighted here. We have the basis pontus, which is the anterior projection, or this jutting out in the front of the pons, highlighted in black. Next we have the middle cerebellar peduncle. So the middle cerebellar peduncle is just a structure that is connecting the pons to the cerebellum. And we have just cut that away so you can see kind of the section part of it there. Last we have the medulla oblongata highlighted here in green. So from an anterior perspective we have the pyramids which are these two structures here and the pyramids carry motor fibers from the brain so they're carrying motor fibers down into the spinal cord. The next structure is just lateral to the pyramids we have the olive so there's one on each side and last we have the cerebellum so this is an anterior view of the cerebellum we just cut it off and we're looking at it from an anterior perspective so we have the two cerebellar hem hemispheres so this is the right and left cerebellar hemisphere and then we have the cerebellar vermis 
right in the middle here that is separating the two hemispheres.